What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. All right. As you guys can see, we are in our multi-million dollar podcast setup studio. I mean, so look at this. We got 10 different mics in here. <laughs> Qualities at its peak, boys. <laughs> no, it doesn't no. get better than this. At least we got the light. You yeah, know, we got a well studio lit. lighting. We're all good. Yeah, we look pretty. We also haven't... We have no name for it. We don't have a podcast name yet, That's but so it's in the works. If you guys have uh, ideas for the podcast, just drop it under this yeah, one, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the fake nappies. We act like we act like we're just gonna be cranking out podcasts <laughs> every other day. <laughs> we live across episode like, one. <laughs> this is this isn't even really like a podcast. Like this is like a podcast style video. Honestly, for, yeah. Because a lot of people were asking us. Yeah, to, this is a long conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a yeah. podcast though. Hundred percent. It's just a highly <laughs> requested video. But like, bear with us during this. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to cut up too much because I feel like a podcast should be a flowing conversation. But we're not podcasting. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's all good it's, though. We'll get it going. So we left questions. I guess we should just start with the questions that Jack has collected as well as mine. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, my phone's at like two percent. Mm. That's cool. So this is really like kind of just like a Q and A. Low key, yeah. A lot of you guys like ask me questions like where where where'd you get those shades and stuff like that. I'm like I'm like I'm... okay no free clout. Mm -hmm. They're all asking me like they're like no Kelly weed's the best. Yeah oh. Kelly oh, weed. Like, okay okay here's one here's one here's one. Yeah. Um, this homie asked me how do you keep making gains after the newbie gains phase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone if you're not familiar with what the newbie gains phase is, that's just like simply put when you're fresh into working out you're gonna make really, really quick gains. Like very significant progress in your first six months of lifting. If you're consistent and eating right and training good. Even if you're not, you're probably gonna make pretty good gains because it's just such a shock to your body. Mm -hmm. Like you're just gonna respond really well. That's not gonna be the case forever. That's right. kinda like a, like a dudes, teaser. Dudes think, dudes think that lasts forever. Like, oh, if I keep gaining at this rate. I'm gonna be the next Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, coming yeah. for you, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what I thought. I was like, bro, I'm about to blow up. I'm like, I'm coming. It's a good motivator, though. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good motivator. motivator. So. But um, um, before we get further into that, just enjoy that time period because that's a yeah, fun time. Dude. Don't stress about yeah, diet yeah. too much there because I see so many. Yeah newer lifters in the dms and i'm sure you get this too and they're so caught up with do i need to cut do i need to do this yeah. bro honestly mm -hmm. if you're fresh to lifting and you're younger just optimize that phase by eating clean eating big and training hard and like just that's, build your base yeah like, and then learn as you go yeah don't think like oh my physique's gotta look like this like just just get used to performing all the <laughs> movements in the gym and like what you like to do in the gym and then eventually you'll have to diversify towards strength and size but at the beginning like you should just be focusing on progressing your compound movements would be my two cents mm -hmm. make yeah. sure that you're you're taking like form seriously in the compound movements mm -hmm. learn how to do the compound movements correctly like a big mistake i made like my best friend he was like the biggest dude on the football team like i was mike legowski and like he was like mm -hmm. the giant dude and i was like the little nerd but like i would always try and keep up with like i was 140 pounds in high school so like i would try and keep up with him on bench and like so i would do close grip and you just be on my it. front delt Oh, no. And my pecs never grew because I'm like, I need to like get up to his weight. And like that, that would put me so behind. Like if I just would have focused on like actually contracting my pecs, mm -hmm. I would have a chest right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it just really focus on like the bench press. You're firing your, che your chest and not, you know, throwing it on your rear delt. Or Don't not... worry about getting too much weight up too quick. That's a huge no, mistake no. Younger's lifter makes, especially in the newbie gain phase. I was blessed to be like... um my dad, the, he adopted me when I was two months old. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I don't know my biological father. So my dad who raised me was a PE teacher, mm -hmm. right? And he was also the football coach. So I didn't really lift in high school, like per se, because I wasn't, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. I just would go in and <laughs> squat for football. Like, okay, I'm going to get good at football, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but he preached, he preached to me when I was younger, like, don't be an ego lifter. Like, you're going to get way more out of actually using good form and moving weight you could, you could mm -hmm. handle. So, like, I never had an issue with that. And, like, that's something that a lot of kids do have. Like, do not be too eager 
to fucking throw up big weight or else it's just, it's just not going to help I you. Mean, yeah, I've started off with a 25 pound on the bar for bench. Yeah, dude, I, 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 I never, I never, I didn't go heavy for a long time. Mm-hmm. I was just learning everything. Um, yeah. But how to optimize it after you've gotten past that point, my answer to that is you need to one, know that progress is going to be slower. So mm-hmm. you got to be yeah. patient because so many people just want something like, like that. And that's just not gonna happen after that phase. Um, I'm, I'm not the best example to say after you've passed that phase, like that's when you gotta start thinking about your diet more and like thinking about the way you're training and really fine tuning stuff. Cause that's not really what I did. I just ate really big and trained hard for the five years I was in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. But I'd say that's like fine tuning stuff. Like what would mm-hmm. you say after that point? My, my two cents would be like, I would think about like your end end term like goal physique like how big do you actually want to be and my two cents would be like you want to stress your body out when you're younger to put on that size Mm. versus stress your body out when you're older so you want to get whatever size you want to be and start reshaping at that weight it becomes problematic especially when you're natural so after the noob games phase my two cents would be then you have to do progressive um overload of compound movements So it'll eventually get to a point where your CNS becomes so fried because you get so strong, but you can't keep increasing the volume. So that's where you see people either go down the steroid route, start bodybuilding, or they go down the natural powerlifting route. That's why, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, YouTube, you see like the max tuning guys and like all them went the powerlifting natural route or people go the steroid route and continue bodybuilding. But right after the noob gains phase, I do think you need to start tracking your calories. I think you need to get like more accustomed to like all the variables are on the table of what you need to figure out. Like Jack got like you just kept eating, but like you might, <laughs> you might. Have... Well, that that was like <laughs> so... that was really the best thing I could have done in the Marine Corps because mm-hmm. I couldn't track macros in the Marine Corps. It's not a thing that's happened because everything's always changing. You're right, always you're, 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 you're always like, getting mm-hmm. fucked with. You're fucking going somewhere here. Like uh, anyone who's in the Marine Corps who's Especially in like your first few years when you have no authority, it's just not it's not gonna happen. So I was like, I'm working a lot. I was getting killed in the mornings running for PT. Anyone who's in the Marine Corps knows how much you fucking run in the morning. And then I train at night, so I'm like, bro, I just need to eat. Like I was obsessed with getting big. I was watching C T Fletcher videos, <laughs> Rich Piana, and Rich I was like, Piano. eat motherfucker, like just eat. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's when like tracking your calories and actually like whether you want to bulk or main gain, whatever you feel is best for you, that's when you need to yeah, start doing could, shit like that. We could touch on that topic. On main gaining? Yeah. So that's another question we got was bulking or main gaining. We actually talked about this off camera mm-hmm. yesterday, mm-hmm. but this term has been coined, I guess I'll chirp him, Greg Doucette. <laughs> Nothing against I Greg. I love Greg. Nothing love against Greg. Greg. I'd watch Greg's video. I'm not trying time. to have like the, My dad. the disciples of Greg. <laughs> come to this video no and, greg hate yeah, i love yeah, greg we're good here we're good but like, <laughs> my two cents is a taller frame you just gotta fill it out my two cents like when i have done let, let's go into my enhanced bodybuilding career like if i would have main gained while being enhanced i would have made such slower progress but if i was like the height of like five six five eight five nine it would be so much easier to fill out my frame and I probably would main gain. So I think it really comes down to like how big is your frame, right? Because And what your goals are, right, I guess, too. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're just like let's say you're an eighteen year old kid and you like lifting, you know you don't want to bodybuild, but you mm. just wanna get a sick physique and like be healthy, main gaining good to go. Like main gain. Like just put on a little bit of muscle slowly and like get to where you wanna be. Now, me, like I said, I wanted to get fucking big. I was like, I'm trying to get big. I'm like, I'm just going to eat, 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 eat. And if I would have main gained or tried to main gain the way I was in the Marine Corps, it just, I, I don't think, I know I wouldn't have the physique no, I have today. No. There's not a chance. I think it just depends on where you're at. Because a dirty bulk right now would not do you as well as it was. I would never dirty bulk. Then. I would well, never. John, like it's dirtier, not, surplus, I should say. Yeah, like yeah. John, it's like, it's not even like Greg's like pointing out like a dirty bulk. Like Greg's yeah. like more pointing out that like it should be like, a maintainable like a little surplus yeah, like a trick yeah. like a trickle feed grow 
Yeah. Versus like me and Jack, we just ate and mm-hmm. ate and ate, and then we reshaped our physiques once we got to the weight we wanted to get to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 100%. I think that works for a shorter person to main gain, but it all like depends what Jack said. Like, what what does your end goal physique look like? Are you trying to look like just an athletic guy? Are you trying to look good on the beach? Or are you trying to be like an NPC IFBB, mm-hmm. you know, professional bodybuilder? Like, what is your goal? Or do you want to? bulk and like i'm just gonna put on 15 mm-hmm. pounds as bulk like if you want to do it do it like yeah, I, like, there's no, like especially if you're not pressed with being a bodybuilder you like cause i'm you someone don't care who about being it. lean all the time i was gonna say it's a good look see that was that's where <laughs> like, i got away with it because imagine if i would have tried to do social media <laughs> on could. the come up i was puffy bro i was yeah. big i was like a big dude that was putting on weight and training mm-hmm. dirty good point like i was not aesthetic at all yeah. um and eventually i got to where i wanted to be but bro i was hood hoodie up in yeah. the gym training mm-hmm. like i didn't give a shit what i looked like I mean, oh no yeah. if i could i would probably do like uh, a just... slight surplus for the next two years if i wasn't doing social media like what you were saying like the fact that you were just hood on working out like yeah. not having to be lean no pressure to be lean that's sick that's that nice. goes into like <laughs> social media has like everyone wants to be shredded 100%, all the time dude. like if i'm not shredded you know, my views are going to go down. I'm That's what kind of sucks growth. for the, the and younger it sucks kids. Cause the it's younger true, kids though. that get the uh, the exposure really quick. Like, yeah. I feel the pressure. Like, I get where they're coming from. Like, no, it's true. It's so much easier to go out and take a picture when you're looking Bro, cut. It's, like, like it, it just it just is. It's, you're going to get more views. You're going to get a better. And when you look cut, like, you'll look bigger, like... I'm like 250. Right? That's oh, the th- oh, bro. Are we really right gonna now. like in person? They know I'm a big dude. On yeah. camera, massive. <laughs> on camera, if they took a picture of me and put him next to a shredded dude who's like 210, like the little guy behind the keyboard is mm-hmm. gonna be like that guy's bigger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you yeah. throw like, angles and shit. It's, it's all angles. So yeah, yeah. Um, my two cents don't get caught up over like being lean all the time because those younger years, my two cents should be spent getting to the size you want to get to because. You know, after 26, unless you're enhanced going that route, like, if you're going to be natural your whole time, you're not going to fuck with PEDs at all, like, you basically have till 26 to build your size that you're going to maintain for the rest of your life. And, like, life goes on way farther after, like, 30 years old. Like, <laughs> people are like, oh, you know, after my 20s, my life is going to be, like... Bro, natural, you know. natural bodybuilders or someone who's been natural their whole life and has grinded the gym... Those dudes always look their best in their 30s yep. because progress is so slow, you know? So, but yeah, this is not me hating on main gaining because my plan for my bulk after this cut is I would like to main gain because I don't have, I'm not going to be a bodybuilder. What's the point of me being in a big surplus, getting like, you know, actually getting puffy? Mm-hmm. I, I think main gaining is a good option for me going into my next bulk, I but agree. that's because I'm at a point to where. I feel like training like that is optimal mm-hmm. in I a agree. sense for my goals. My I other two you. points would be that once I do my first contest, which I'm going to prep on video, like I will probably main gain after because I'm going to hover around that stage weight and reshape my physique. But the other side of the coin is like, even if you put on 10 pounds of straight fat, you would get stronger. That's yeah, true. You would true. get stronger. That's true. So if you're powerlifting, If you just put on 10 pounds of straight fat, you would increase all the volume of your lifts. In my opinion, that volume increase, the weight increase, would build more muscle. You're gonna make gains. You're gonna make gains on a bulk, even if it was a dirty bulk. Even if it was a dirty bulk, you will make gains. You could always just cut. I mean, but it is harder. It is is harder. harder. Like I I think Greg's like thing is like cutting is difficult. Like. Cutting I think does Greg suck. probably have seen too many people like me who have been forever bulked forever, forever bulks. and that they never actually cut. Yeah, yeah. It's just like there's two sides of the coin, but I really don't think that everyone should main gain. I feel like if Jack said like if he main gained the whole time in the Marines, yeah, you wouldn't have the physique you do now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's the thing. I think people get so caught up on that because you see, especially the younger ones. Like mm-hmm. if you're young, bro, and you just want to get big. I wouldn't mess around with main gaining. That's just no. me, though. Especially if you're a skinnier kid. But Greg, all love. Yeah. Love you to death, man. I watch your videos. Mm-hmm. It just depends on angles, like you said. 
Are you kidding me? That that video when Greg I went can hear off, it already. Wink, They're all wink. fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg, I'm not obese. No. I'm not obese. You like, call me obese. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm the plus size model of young LA, Greg. So we're, we're just, it's 2021, we're Greg. To, we're to <laughs> plus to size here. is in. Oh, uh, he would no, have a no. field day. Plus size that. is not in. No, no, no. no. Not in. That lazy shit. Plus size. That's too funny. Speaking of plus size, that's a topic that I, I wouldn't mind like kind of segueing into. You're, you're big on that. You have <laughs> a strong opinion. Yeah. I have a very, very. You're open about it. And I'm. Mm-hmm. I don't, dude. I don't. I don't want to get mad hate for this or anything. You so, won't. You're uh, in the fitness industry. It's my channel. The comment section is always a toxic wasteland. So is it? Okay. I've never read your okay. comments, honestly. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't either. Yeah, I, honestly, now I'm curious. Now I'm curious yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But um, the whole body shaming thing. The plus size, like being, like. I guess satisfied with wherever you're at. Mm-hmm. I always have seen that as a cop out of laziness. Yeah, if you're working on it. That's good. Like, I'm not hating on someone that's fat at all. But if you're, like, like what you said, saying, like, you should, like, fit shaming and, like, really just trying to accept it where you're at, I think there's a fine line between just being lazy. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it, 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 like, it's, like, it's baffling to me that so many people are, like, kind of hopping on this. Like, it's okay. Love yourself. Because loving yourself obviously is important. Like, I, but, like, if you really loved yourself you would take care of yourself mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And it doesn't mean that you have to do what Russo does in the gym or I do in the or gym anyone, or like anyone. any of these bodybuilders yeah. going to the gym. It just means that you're healthy. Like you take care of yourself to a certain degree. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just so sick and tired of seeing all this body, this body, that I like, always think, all the shit that gym sharks fucking pulling. Uh, like, I just don't, I just yeah. like, I stopped shaving my armpits. After I, saw that. <laughs> I felt freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Stop shaving everything. That, Let it yeah. fly. Yeah. Just, no, I, I just think putting it on a pedestal like gym shark is doing is not the move. Like, yeah. Love well, yourself. I'll, I'll trip gym shark. This is my yeah. channel. I mean, yeah. gym don't shark, like, that, that Francis dude who built Gymshark, like, the original brand ideals after he signed that. He had that, it, dude. He sold that to that board dude. of executives the minute that happened. I get it, dude. I get it. It was the fastest growing UK company. Oh, yeah. You saw that giant bag. and I'd have done How much was it again? I don't even it know. Was it like was, stupid. It was, it was, it was like stupid. He was already rich before. And he was in his 20s, too. So. Yeah, but like. Anyways. I just, like, Gymshark was, like, you're the shark in the gym, you know? That was the brand. Oh, now, like, it's like so mainstream. Course. I see, like, yeah. it's just, like, trying to be Under Armour, in my opinion. There you go. It's but, just... like, I think if I was a genie and I took a, a plus-size person that's happy, like, yeah. oh, I'm happy, like... You if know, you were a genie. <laughs> if I was a genie and yeah. I snapped my fingers yeah. and, and they were dialed, would they want me to snap my fingers again and turn them back? Yeah, 100%. If yeah. they got a day when they were dialed, their physique was dialed. Not to a point like obsessive with me, like no. like bo- body dysmorphia and me, but just like if they're just in shape and healthy, would they want me to snap my fingers again and turn them back at the end of the day? No. Mm, no. Yeah. No. No doubt. No doubt. Um, I just, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And, it, and it's turned into like fat people shaming fit people that's where it's because we're not lazy you yeah. know when i i had a programming job and you know it guys you know most of them don't work out right uh-huh. so i would <laughs> always come i'm not talking shit there are some jacked it guys you know a lot of you guys do message me but the general programmer <laughs> like the world of warcraft guy on like South probably here. not gonna be in fucking the fucking gym right eating doritos and drinking shit. sprite right 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 <laughs> Like, every time I would come in with my prep food, this was, like, when I was, like, doing a recomposition, they'd be like, nice cat food, Russo, you never come out to eat with us, and they would eat at this, like, burger place. Like, there's there's no reason to, like, pin fat people against fit people. Or fit people against fat people. It's just, 100%. like... I'm just saying, this is mostly my message to people on this, and this is why I want to talk about it, is, like, really be real with yourself and say, am I being lazy here? Or is it like I'm satisfied? You know what I'm saying? That's like, good. That's I think good so many it. people take the easy way out nowadays, and I just wish it would. I wish it wasn't like that. It kind of sucks that it is, but at the same time, if you want to do that, go for it. Hundred like, percent, bro. Like, yeah, I don't care, but yeah, food's fucking. Don't good. make it out to be something <laughs> that it's not. Yeah. Don't make it out to be something that it's not. I saw a TikTok the other day. It was like, if you work out, it's not to be fit. It's because you're fat. There was, big, bro, 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 like, bro. Or bro, that, so you would have hated uh, that one. There's this chick that got on a TikTok and was like, this series if too, you are trying to achieve a certain body, 
and you're not happy with how you are, you're you're fat shaming. You're fat phobic. That's where I draw the line. Yeah, I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> like I remember when you? I first started training when I was tiny. I was in like the little YMCA, like begin- <laughs> yeah. the beginner gym. Uh, we worked out at a YMCA, <laughs> oh, the yeah, Mecca, baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was this like super overweight guy, and like he would go so hard on the elliptical every oh, time. Crazy. And I remember like. Out of everyone in the gym training, like, he was still the hardest worker in the room. And, like, I fed off his energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just, like, I'm not shaming that dude not at all. all. Like, if you're I just, love to see that shit. If you're going yeah. hard, like, and you're trying to fix the issues, because, you know, I've had a girlfriend for a long time, my long-time girlfriend I've talked about in the past, but, like, getting over a binging disorder is very difficult. Oh, it I could imagine. It is yeah. not, I it, imagine, it is not yeah. this simple, like... It's a mental disorder, and for seeing someone break that and seeing someone turn it around is much more motivating than someone who has been, you know, blessed with good genetics and in shape all their life. So, yeah, I really don't think we fall under the category of fat phobic. Like, I don't go in the no. gym and be like, huh, you know, I'm the juiced up no, douchebag, no. you're fat, Bro, ha-ha. I, like, like, yeah, I, can't, I hate like when that. I see that shit. I can't fathom I fucking hate that. when I yeah. see that shit, bro. That's, yeah. Um, I was just touching on that because I always be seeing so much mm. body positivity stuff. It's I'm getting like, worse. You guys are just being lazy. But at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want. Just, 100%. How do you really want to be at the end of the day? That's your that's your call. Last message, basically. Just don't accept it. All right, let's go into Jack's natural training philosophy versus my enhanced training mm. philosophy. Oh, this is funny. Because and the PNW origin and view on the fitness industry. The PNW origin? origin? What, does that mean? What, the, what do you think he means by that? Like The origin of you guys. I oh, guess. Okay. oh, yeah. oh I see what you guys mean. Okay. okay, That's a pretty good one. Yeah, because we're all from the Pacific Northwest originally. That's funny. Um, okay, this is a funny topic just because we got to train with Russo yesterday for the first time. <laughs> and sore. if this was like where I normally train, this is where we were at yesterday. Like way the fuck up yeah. here. And uh, it, it was, was like... Hard. It was like, you would say that's like training enhanced would well, be the optimal way. Yeah, the, the video's on their channel, but I gave them IGF deaths. So I know a lot of you guys probably have experience with something in the GH pathway, but they were getting like the hyperplasia effect for the first time. I'd never have done anything like that in the past. <laughs> I was with Russo and he's like, you want to try? I was like, fuck it, I'm with Russo. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you take over the workout and show us what you would do and he did he so like the, the enhanced philosophy I, I used to train like jack right i would do the power building i would really focus on my compounds if i go on a heavy cycle it becomes blood volume training so we did blood volume training mm. so basically what i was trying to do was trap those drugs in the areas you wanted and constantly pump as much blood into them as possible and that's like that's why if you're starting off in the gym, you're not enhanced, you don't want to be enhanced, like, you should not copy the way a pro bodybuilder trains. Hell no. No, because I did I that. was more showing them, like, this is how, like, a pro competitor on cycle would train. Like, we did lighter weights, we did extreme amounts of volume. Stupid. And we, we didn't really go that heavy. <laughs> yeah. It was a different type of workout for them. But I definitely think, overall, in general, if you're starting off, if you're midway through, or you're, like, semi-enhanced, you should definitely train the way Jack trains. Yeah, which is I'd say more basic, like progressive basic. overload stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like um, yeah. when I first started lifting, I was push pull legs. I was push pull legs forever, and then I'd switch it up a little bit. I got into the Arnold, but it's more just like four sets of your exercise, get your reps, make the reps count when you're mm-hmm. doing it, mm-hmm. rather than focusing on insane amounts of volume like mm. stupid if you guys want to check out that workout i'll have clips of I'll it i'll put the i'll put the pop up yeah, in the, yeah. In i'll the have clips screen. of it on my um on my video that's coming out whenever it ends up coming out um it's when we were at g standard but it was fun it, it was, was different dude. but i will 100 percent wouldn't train like that regularly mm. just for my goals and like i'm someone who isn't gonna experience like heavy cycles of peds mm. like that's not my intention yeah. So, um, I'm going to continue training the way I have been, even though I am now on 200 milligrams of TRT. Yeah, that's not mm-hmm. like, like, if you're on like... I'm not natural, but it's like... But nothing's really changed, I'm right? chilling, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, if you're on a heavy cycle, you yeah, want to train yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But like, that is what that type of training is what differentiates the top pros. Well, like, because I've had pro trainers, and like, they don't really... I had one pro trainer, and he's had, like, I think he's, like, 
12, 13 pro cards under his belt. Oh, Jesus. And, like, he just killed me with volume. Like, I didn't even do the shit he did because, like, I almost passed out during the workout. But, like, he would make me lateral raise. He's like, all right, Russo, start with the 90s. And I'm like, dude, I can't lateral raise the 90s. He's like, well, just do it as much as you can. So I would literally move that much with the 90s. He made me go down to the 10s. This is all the way down. Back to back to back. And if I didn't get the reps, then he would push my arms up. And I got down to the tens and I couldn't raise them. And he made me raise them. How are you feeling? And you know, that's another thing is if you tried to train like that naturally, no, oh, it wouldn't happen. You'd, yeah, you you would fucked. never recover. You'd get injured. Mm-hmm. And the, it's just not possible. You know, I, I tried training like that. Honestly, that's a good no. Don't be training like these Mr. Olympia guys. Because I remember I'd watch them and try to copy their workouts and... Yeah, when I first started lifting, I'm like, I'm a train. Yeah. I'm a train like Dorian. Well, what's yeah. what's a kid's mindset? Like, yeah. who's the best? Yeah. See bum. Okay, I'm gonna look at him. Oh, I'm gonna train like that. You can't. You yeah. can't really. No. And you're like hella motivated. So you're like, I'll do it. And like, you have to be heavily enhanced to train like that. Like Jack's TRT, he you would you would make progress. You'd be fried all the time. Oh, like I was dead on that work. I was like, heavy? what is going on? Like a heavy cycle. What would you consider that? Like a blast. Like if. If Jack ran like 350 test with like a more selective androgen on top and then had something in the GH pathway, then you could train like that. But just TRT, no, I wouldn't, I would train progressive overload style. Like when I go into my cruises, I train like Jack, or when I used to go completely off, I would basically just do straight power lifting. Like I would just go back, I'm gonna just like keep my central nervous system mm-hmm. hard and just do volume with my compounds and like rarely focus on my accessories. And then when I got back on cycle, I would slowly switch to higher volume over time. But yeah, true. Because if you like, kind of like what we did yesterday, completely flipped the script oh. and trained 100% different, we were hurting. Like, we woke up hurting. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, John, that you're yeah. like, I agree with you. Yeah. Like when you train like a super enhanced person, it's like your cardiovascular system Dude. gives out before your muscles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I gave out a couple times. I was just like winded. Mad respect for all <laughs> yeah. the pros out there that that's are winded. training like that. Cause that, that that's not even like a that's like that's a, not even like a real one. That's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's like an intermediate one. I wouldn't say it's a beginner one, but like the crazy ones I've seen. That's what that what that's what makes those pros pros, and that's also what makes like yeah. anyone thinks they can take all these drugs and look like that. But really, you have to like realize that when you're taking those drugs, it means you can exhibit that much damage onto yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. if you're not exhibiting that much damage, then there's no point of blasting those drugs, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like everyone's like, oh, if I copy C-Bum cycle and I train like how I normally train, I'm going to look like... No. Not at all. No, you have to kill your... Like, it just like... The steroids so unlock, many factors unlock that go the into ability it. for you to kill yourself and feed your body enough to keep it going. Mm-hmm. That's that's t- the fitness industry so fucked for that. All, all the time. And when like, you see... no, no one brings that up. Like, no one brings up, like, there's no. a way you should bodybuild naturally. There's a way you should powerlift naturally. There's a way you should bodybuild enhance. There's a way you should powerlift enhance. Like, you're right on that, dude. I've been trying to do research on it, and I can't find much I on it. I can figure that out. And the only reason I figured yeah. it out is because I've had pro trainers around mm-hmm. me who've trained pros, and I'm like, oh. Like, I'm training way too much like a power builder here. If it, Okay, like, let's say I was like, let's say I was going to do a show, but it was completely on me to do it. Yeah. Oh, I would have that. not trained the way that he did, and they wouldn't have been not optimal. You know what I'm and saying? And if you like, didn't, like, let's say you did a show and you trained the way you normally train, like, you would have way less cuts. Because mm-hmm. when you're trapping that blood, like, as you're dieting, you're getting more cuts. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you're, like, just power building still, you would look flat. Like, you would be able to look fuller if you trained that way mm-hmm. in the show. So it's very important if you want to do a show to be heavily researched into how to do everything right because. It's just so damaging on your health, and if you're not winning the show, it is not worth the extreme mm. amount of money to do the show, and the health implications of doing the show, as well as the body dysmorphia of doing a show as well. The body dysmorphia. I mean, yeah. I have so many, so many girls that message me, like bikini girls, and just takes a toll on their brain. So tough. Oh, dude, Matters, dude, especially if you're a girl. So much respect for the top 
top tier competitors or anyone who competes in bodybuilding. That's fucking crazy. That'd be wired different. That'd be crazy. I'm I'm just chilling. Definitely wired different. Definitely wired different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why, you gotta be a little crazy to get a pro. I card. actually had a question <laughs> for you though, Russo, just for fun. Like, for sure. Let's say, because I was, I thought about this earlier. Like, let's say I was gonna compete in December mm-hmm. and I could go through a bulking stage and I was willing to do PEDs. Mm-hmm. What would you suggest my cycle would be oh. off of your expertise and off of where I am now? Just for fun. So I would start off with high test, and then as you get closer to the show, I would you know lower the test over time, and then add in trend and master on. Oh shit! So you need trembolone oh. because of, the thing that trend does that no other steroid does is it sensitizes the androgen receptor to IGF one. So if you both were blasting trend when I gave you all that IGF, your pump would be even worse mm. than it was. <laughs> Because your Damn. your androgen receptors are sucking in the IGF one way better. That's why trend is used. And then two trend. weeks out, <laughs> two scary. weeks out from the show, we would drop all injectables. You would switch to all orals, and then like three days before, I would add in what's called halotestin, which is pretty much the most powerful oral, which would completely harden your look. So you would be like granite on stage, and the whole time I would be like starving you. And then I would refeed you right before and fill you out. But even if you did the show, we'd have to see how you reacted to that cycle, what drugs you like, what drugs you didn't like, how you reacted with it. like basically your first show is just to give your coach an ability to like build your cycle for the third show and nail it. Like you need to have mm-hmm. that one show where like, all right, let's let's mess around with your diet this way. Oh, you came in too flat, came in too watery. Mm-hmm. Next show, let's try a different approach. It's like, like fine tuning. That's too. why you should always stick with the same coach, and you gotta trust your coach. And you shouldn't ever, ever do a show by yourself. Yeah. I had a friend uh, who did a show by himself. I'm like, I came into his house. I'm like, dude, you're way too lean. You're mm-hmm. way too lean. He's like, no, I got. He's like, I get leaner. I'm like, no, no, just stop. And he looked. Horrible Why would you not get a coach, dude? I have a friend that does because the same. he's he's smart like me. He's a biohacker oh. like me. But when you're dieting, like you're fucked up. So <laughs> insane. You're so so insane. Up. Like when you're looking yeah. at yourself in the mirror when you've been starving for weeks, you, you can't you can't judge yourself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what I'd have you do. But it like your first show would just be the trial, honestly. Yeah, that's the thing. But it, it would be standard like trend master on and then drop the or or drop the injectables. Because injectables hold a little bit of water because of the esters. So the te- you're using cypionate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so cypionate, that's going to hold a little bit more water than propionate. So closer, like three weeks out, we would switch you from cypionate to propionate, which propionate only lasts about a day. So in crazy. your body, so so you be so, so much you would, so, you would, so you would switch shit. from doing cypionate where you do two shots a week. Yeah, yeah. So I would have you do propionate the same, like a little bit more, but every like you shoot it every day, yeah, so yeah. you're holding a little bit less water. Shit. Yeah. See, that's, and that's cool. the big reason why I don't plan on ever bodybuilding. So I just don't have the desire to. Because if I was gonna do it, I'm not doing natural competition. Obviously, I'm on mm-hmm. TRT now. Um, I just don't have the desire to. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do PEDs like that. You also don't have like the knowledge to do that too. I hell, feel like hell, hell, that's hell. how I also knew this kid was natty. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I like I'll say that's the thing. There's yeah. a reason why I went through a clinic. Yeah, I'm like yeah. I don't want to fuck around with shit that I'm not 100 percent confident in. 100%. That's how I've always been. I think there's. I yeah. mean, not trying to convince you, but like, <laughs> like I said off camera, it would be really easy to turn you pro. Dude, it it'd be funny, but. Little test rabbit. We're just chilling, boys. Just but it's like smoking no. weed, working out, but it's making like, sick content. Did, if you did get your pro card, you already have what every pro wants. Every pro exactly. wants the social media following. Every pro wants the sponsorship. Every pro wants the financial freedom and to do what they love every day. You already got all that. You already <laughs> Dude, got all that. Good point. That, that, that's what like, I say. Like I already have, like as the YouTuber, as the like you already have what the pro goes through that for. And like two decades ago, before social media, you had to get in a magazine to become someone. Yeah, you had to yeah, get a yeah, photographer definitely. to Dude, become someone. So much harder. Now, fuck all those people. Like you can do it's it all crazy. yourself. You think that like, the middleman's gone? You know what's funny? It's not funny, but I'm just like, bro, you really got to be like that. It's like when you see those dudes at your local gym <laughs> that are fucking. You know that they're geared up, like yeah. big, and they're competing, and they're like going. More often than not. Those are the dudes that hate on me in the gym. 
and on other people for having social media. Oh, they hate on me so much, I bet. Like, any of these younger kids that have platforms, too, and they just get all this hate, like, dude, these guys don't know what they're doing, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, at the end of the day, like, (laughs) you're just hating. Bro, back to what you were saying earlier, if a kid thinks he needs to look like Jack to, like, get what you've gotten... Like, whether it be social media. Dude, it's just all marketing. If you think that... It's marketing. If you think that being big is going to get you a following... Dude. You're obviously mistaken. Like, just go and look at all these kids. Bro, even look at me. I'm not talking shit on some of these dudes that are coming up, but... Dude, if anything... There's a lot of kids that are 170 and shredded that are like... They're smarter than the guys at the gym that we see that are all juiced out that hate on them because they look like, no, not don't look great. But they're making money, getting think, the sponsorships. I think it's like, just like pure jealousy and anger of like. That's all it is. They thought that like, cause like when you're like a crazy bodybuilder that's geared up all the time, like, do you really have time to build your personality? Mm. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like, yeah. Like when a hater comes at me, I'll be like, I could stop bodybuilding tomorrow and just talk on a camera and still have all this. Like, you're mad because you thought like. The physique was gonna get you a bunch of girls. No, you gotta learn how to talk to girls. You oh, gotta learn how to talk to girls. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then he's like, "Oh, getting a I good physique I... is gonna get you more dudes." And I'm Dude, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you have it, you have it, bro. Like, if you can get girls, you can get girls. The physique only helps time, yeah. like that much. But no, I guess <laughs> yeah. the the reason why I brought that topic up is because I just I was like, you don't need to, all these younger kids that are like, I'm gonna get on gear and I'm gonna. No, blow up. yeah. Doesn't translate like that. No. Doesn't translate like that at all. You have to make good content. You have to be personable. You have to, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I would focus more on that. It's more of a grind. Ever than thinking that you have to use PEDs to be successful in no. the fitness industry. It's a damn grind, bro. Like, we grinded, like, more than, like, just a body. Like, three TikToks a day type shit. Then, like, yeah, it's a grind, bro. It's not just have a good physique and, if you and pose. you do want to compete, like, I'm going to compete. Just because my audience has wanted me to compete for years at this point. He's going to do it I for the culture. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be there. I'm going to be there. <laughs> yeah, we but, up. but, like, in my opinion, you should already have your social media rolling. You should roll into the show with, like, you're following behind you. The sponsorship's already there. You're going to be propelled so much faster than, oh, I just need to focus on getting my pro yeah. card route. Right that fuck social media. Like, I'm going to just juice hard. Like, you should be focused on building your assets around you. And then, like, the pro card or winning the show is, like, the cherry on top that, like, dumps gasoline on what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. I really see that mistake a lot, and I see that anger a lot of, like, a guy will have a better physique than me in the gym, and he'll be talking shit on me, and, like, he's already (laughs) competed, but, like, has gotten no attention. Like, if I competed, it would just dump gasoline on the shit I already had. So it's, like, focus on your personality the most. Like, I don't even bodybuild. Like, I just bodybuild to regulate my bipolarism, honestly. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. Like, I'm not in there like, oh, yeah. like, I really don't care. Like, I normally do train hoodied up completely. I yeah, don't even yeah. look those, at Dude, those, those were the days. That's a vibe. Before I, before, like, I, lo- I love making content for you guys, like, obviously, because I try and crank out videos, but it hit so much different in the gym when I didn't have to do that shit. Alone, when I could just go just and grind. That's why so I like fitness well. So like, enjoy that time if you are someone that wants to be on the grind. Like, it kind of, just know it's going to take away a little bit from the purity of lifting, in my opinion. At least that's what I experienced. It does, a little bit yeah. for sure. If like, you want to make good videos. Like, bro, because some days I just want to go in the gym and I'm like, I don't want to have a camera. I just want to fucking get a good lift in. And I can't because I'm yeah. like, you're, you're really lucky because you have John. Like, when I was doing it, we do have it, a team. Yeah. yeah. That's I my had, man right there. Like, yeah. no one, like, no one believed in me personally. And, like, I just took my tripod and camera to the gym and set up. And, like, when I would do my SARM documentaries, like, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to record today. This workout's going to be fucking terrible. Dude, yeah. And then I'm, like, so focused on making the video. And then I post it, and everyone's like, this guy can't train. And well, then, it's impossible. And the next to day, the camera's off, and yeah. yeah, and the next yeah. day, the camera's off. So, oh yeah, no, the, the workouts take a hit, like slightly, but it's not like a big difference. But they take a slight hit when we record. Oh, definitely. You know definitely. what I mean? It's whatever. Like it's worth it to us, but we just go hard the other five days we're in there. You know? Yeah, I guess we kind of started talking about how to go about, <laughs> like, <laughs> what getting into social media and fitness and balancing that. But mm-hmm. we did have a question in my DMs. Like a lot of kids asked me this question about starting up like they want to get involved they want to mm. do a start how do i get a sponsorship that's a question that i got and um it's all it's all going to come down to your content at the end of the day you just got to make the fucking content like 
um, for so long I wanted to make content, but I didn't have the resources to. And then finally mm-hmm. me and John were just like, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to make content. And we fucking did it though. Like, yeah, we didn't like, half ass. We it was pumped like, out yeah. three TikToks a day for like three months. Minimum, bro. There's three days where I was um, like four. <laughs> and then we grinded YouTube as well mm-hmm. and Instagram. And it was like a job. And we study the algorithm. It's a job like, with yeah. no payout until years mm-hmm. later. Yeah, yeah. They see you when you're already winning. 100%. Oh, that's classic. They, they come to me when I'm, they don't see the five years where I'm just throwing shit against the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm. Yep. You and know. you know what's even crazier is TikTok's kind of making it possible. Like, look at all these new heads that popped up. I'm one of the new heads yeah. that popped up because of TikTok. It's and like the quick, it was so much harder back then. It's so crazy, like, like insane. Um, you had to do the whole YouTube route, mm-hmm. and you know how hard it is to get YouTube oh views my God. with zero exposure. Like literally, just go watch. It's like you have to make a good yeah, video. Your that family and mom it. and uncles might watch it. It's yeah, not it's it. crazy. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, like I had. Dude, it's tough. Like I was a programmer. I was a cinematographer. Like I already went into the YouTube route with video editing expertise like yeah youtube's very difficult like people think vlogging is easy it's not easy like it's not easy mm-hmm. to be yourself on camera like i was telling i jack, suck at it i was bro. telling jack like I'm jack's like well how do you talk like that on camera i'm like you just gotta keep talking like three years down the line you'll look back at these videos right now and be like, <laughs> for, oh, sure, man. I just, yeah. for sure because like i look at my first videos i'm like ugh, compared to how i talk now I was doing that last night. But you just have to keep throwing shit against the wall. And my opinion would be don't take those bullshit sponsorships. There's so many sharks out there Mm -hmm. that do what's called blanket affiliate marketing. So there's two ways to do affiliate marketing. So let's look at Gorilla Mind. Gorilla Mind's exclusive. Shout out, Derek. Shout out, more plates, more Mm -hmm. days. Gorilla Mind's exclusive, you know. They pick me, Jack. They don't pick everyone. I'm sure there's thousands of people that want to be sponsored by Gorilla Mind. They keep it to like bigger tier influencers. And then there's another company like, let's say, Redcon One, where anyone could be sponsored. Mm-hmm. It's not really a sponsorship. They're just using you and your friends and your following to make money off of you. You really have to differentiate like, okay, this is an opportunity that's going to end in long-term growth. This is a legitimate sponsorship. Or, okay, this is a blanket affiliation shark that is trying to use me and you really won't get much out of it. So really just focus on your clout. Once you have clout, you have extreme negotiation power. I hate the term clout, but it's yeah. true. Like like the term clout is definitely a thing. Like engagement's another engagement. Word. That's like the that's like I guess right, the yeah. more focus on your engagement. You wanna call it clout, call it clout, but really it's just like if you have a good audience and you have that clout good opportunities are gonna come. And all you. clout's not created equal. Like I no. could I could sit there make shit content, have a hundred thousand followers, but my my core ten thousand people that have followed me are over three deleted channels that fuck with me mm-hmm. hardcore is worth a hundred thousand bullshit followers 100%. that don't fuck with me. So you really have to differentiate like not all cloud is created equal. Yeah, don't get too caught up in the numbers. So I feel like a no. lot of people do that, bro. Provide and I think the uh, best way to do that is literally just make genuine content. Don't be those dudes out there that are try, like, bro, trying, bro. I really views. am trying not to hate on people on TikTok because I get it. Like, do what you got to do at the end of the day. But, bro, like, I can't. Every time I see a fucking skit on TikTok, I just want to smash my head against. Well, it's yeah. like all my social media, all my, my social head. media marketing friends are like, Russo, what the fuck are you doing? Get social on TikTok. Marketers. They're giving out free clout. Yeah. And I just, like, I go on TikTok, and, like, no offense to any of these yeah. dudes, I get it, they're, like, trying to grow, but, like, I would cringe. At what cost? Yeah, I would at cringe at myself, and my girl would be, like, every time I say I'm going to do TikTok, my girl's like, oh, my fucking God. I'm going to be cringing. That's how most people are, you. still. And, like, honestly, like, it's not as cringe as you think sometimes, but... I think certain things aren't cringe, but, yeah. like... My friend's, like, real into, like, the funnel marketing. He's like, well, you gotta do trending sounds. Yeah. You gotta post three times a day like you guys were doing. And, like, you gotta play off the music that they're, like, you gotta do the skits. And I'm like, I ain't doing any of that bullshit. I I never, I think the closest thing I ever got to doing a skit on TikTok was (laughs) I did a little joke about, like, when the pre-workout hits. And, like, I just, like, was fucking around and something. But, like... I just can't make honestly like, dif- that, like differentiate differentiate yourself kind of how we did by not doing that especially how you did that honestly might be the move right now is to just get away from that and do your own thing and if you do go the TikTok route yeah. which 
all my friends who they get salary paid by multiple clients to grow their social medias. They all say start with TikTok right now. TikTok's the move. If you just, want to just, just remember ridiculous. that the reason they're successful is because they pulled that TikTok audience and diversified it to mm-hmm. YouTube and Instagram. That's why they're here right now. I feel like if they were only on TikTok, oh, no. they wouldn't have gone as many opportunities as you did. So you guys did it right. But like, pull it off TikTok and funnel it into higher quality content. Funnel it into something like that. Because like TikTok is like, basically they did the algorithm like dopamine overstimulation, yep. dopamine overstimulation, dopamine overstimulation. Like you're not going to get to really know someone. The reason they know Jack and John, their audience, is because they did YouTube. You can see the characters they YouTube, are. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that they're lot. authentic. Yeah. And same thing with the Instagram. So I would I would pull it off TikTok, but think like, I got to become a YouTuber. Like I got to become an actual personality on camera. I got to be actually legit, real, and be able to display that on camera when the thing is recorded. YouTube? Out of like all the socials, like you said, TikTok's definitely the way to start right now, 100%. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why I have my platform right now. But I think if you really want to make it, YouTube has to be the Dude. ultimate goal. Go and, yeah. I'm not hating on anyone, but go and check the TikTokers that are popping right now. And then go and check their YouTubes. Mm-hmm. It's a lot harder to grow on YouTube. So much more difficult. So it's hard to transfer harder to even to YouTube. Instagram. I have a friend that has 900,000 on TikTok and she has less than 10K on IG. It's like... How? So don't get caught up yeah, in the don't numbers. Don't get caught up in the numbers at and all. Most like, importantly, bro, like make content that you like. Don't try and copy someone mm-hmm. else because it's just it's not gonna work out for you in the long run. And then find Be a original. way to provide value. Like you provide a value through motivation. You provide a value by just like straight knowledge on yeah, like, yeah, yeah, biohacking. Yeah. And then for me, it was more Tutorials like just like fitness whatnot, stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's when they'll really fuck with you. That's when you get the messages like you changed my life or like. I was this, I was depressed, and then you helped me, and stuff like that. Because when you're just doing skits and stuff, it's like, you know what I mean? Oh, you're really motivated. It's like, you know, it's still cool and all, but that's I how you get the writers. I remember when I had 800 subs, and I was just, like, grinding like crazy, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working. Like, I was getting no no views, and I was asking YouTubers, and a couple of them answered me, and their, their input was simple. You make the good content, they will come. Period. You don't, you don't Period, make the good content, bro. they ain't never gonna come. Yeah. So be realistic with yourself. Like I feel like people just can't be real. Well, with you know what anymore. I see so much it is on shit content so much on IT, and I'm not hating on anyone's content, but like the only thing I will remind people to do or ask them to do is drop a comment on my YouTube video. Oh, yeah. Like please drop a comment like that because that is so hard to get on YouTube and it helps so much. So anyone who drops any comment, drop a comment like, right thank now. you. Like you're gonna help him out. <laughs> So yeah. much more than you know by dropping a comment. But, bro, when you see those people that are like, I hate that fucking like, save, share, like, save, share, uh, every like, post? save, share. Because my mindset on that is like, bro, if you make good content, people are going to do that regardless. I mean, I can get on the specific. <laughs> people are going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I can get on the specific algorithms of YouTube to give you guys the edge. But basically what the algorithm is looking like, and it, it, it doesn't care. This is just how it's programmed, right? It's looking for retention rate how many times are you bringing the same viewer back to your channel then it's looking at how far is the viewer watching into the video Mm -hmm. so theoretically if you made a two minute video and they only watch a minute of it and you made a 10 minute video and they watch like four and a half minutes the 10 minute video is probably better so keeping the viewer viewed to the screen then like Dislike it doesn't matter if there's likes or dislikes. It counts as the same. Yeah. Thing. So everyone out there that's disliking my videos, you're only helping. You're helping the cops. You're literally helping. Keep that you're shit interacting out. on the thing. <laughs> I love. I love when you put out a video and it hasn't even premiered Dude. yet, and you get the dislikes. I'm like, all right, good to know. I, I got some haters. I see of, that. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh. I see that on yours. I'm like, who? Like, what the hell? And then comment, and then the title. Right. You should go whatever video you're trying to make, and you're like wherever you want to slot it. You should search. And see what the other titles are. That's and funny. Then, that's yeah. funny that's that cool. you say that, because when I got on YouTube, like, and even kind of still today, I'm not the best with titles. I just make yeah. random shit up, like mm. Winter 2020. Like, mm. I'm so surprised that that kind of. What's in your tags list? Oh, I'd have to look. I'd have okay. to look. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but. But your titles are important, and then the first um, sentence in the description also counts as search titling. So there's the title. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, damn, maybe I'll switch it. Because so, I'm always like, what's bullshit, up, boys? Yeah. <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> Which it Boobies is good back. to see you guys. Boobies <laughs> <laughs> like back. Yeah. Boobies out of the pen. Yeah, I'm fuck searching that. Uh, but yeah, I guess we kind of we went off topic there, everything. But 
for anyone who's asking questions about social media and how to get involved in the fitness industry, that's my two cents on it, is make good content. I would also mm-hmm. say that yeah. the fitness industry in general is just, I'm from the underground. Of, underground. I'm the, I hate the term fitness industry. It's like a facade. Like It looks so cool when you're on the outside, and I've been under it. And it is, it's not what you think it is, in my two cents. It never is. And like my channel has just been the whole goal is just to just to rip the curtain off it. Well, that's why I try and be as genuine as I possibly can with you guys, and that's why it does kind of bug me when people are like, mm-hmm. "This guy's full of shit." Because, bro, I have never told a lie on camera to you guys. Like, I just it just I don't have a reason to. And if you want to believe that or not, like that's whatever. It's beyond the point, but. Yeah, I'd have yeah. to agree with you. I just think when I was younger, I wanted to be in the fitness industry just like them. And, like, the way my life played out, even though, like, I magically became in the fitness industry. And in my two cents, I would think of, like, three different YouTube industries to go into. Like, maybe fitness isn't working. Like, you should have three different passions. And you should split it up at the beginning. Don't put all your eggs in one basket right. yeah. at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like yeah. I look up to the guys that like branch off and do other things, kind of like you, Russo. That's the goal. Yeah, not just the the underground. The underground. Yeah, I'm in the the real. But that's industry. a big reason why I have always fucked with Russo, exactly. and like I like linking up. Like, dude, I, this was probably the like the collab that I was the most hyped about. And it's not like it's not based off a of clout. It's not based off of views. It's because I genuinely fuck. It honestly with Russo, feels like know? we're genuinely just, yeah, we're genuinely just, just meeting someone it. from the gym. We're sitting in my room yeah. filming a podcast mm-hmm. on a table. No, yeah, it feels like we brought mm-hmm. him over, like from the kid that lives Which down the cool road. Which is cool because in my short experience in the fitness industry, well, now not, you... not everyone's like that, bro. Not everyone's like that. Oh, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna. If I named that name, oh man, there'd be a video the next day. But we're not dropping names, and I'm yeah. not spreading any hate. There's but I'm a just lot saying, of snakes in the grass. I and pre- it's like bite me once, shame on me. Yeah. But after they bite you once, it's just be real. Cut them off. Mm-hmm. Don't come at me with no sideways shit, because I don't fucking play that. Mm-hmm. And then the like, the day. No. and then let's say you do get su- successful, and you do get this following. Now, now you're viewed as an asset to everyone. Whether you like it or not, like, you're close friends. Like, that's why you should keep your close friends around you, because it only gets worse, but you're just kind of viewed as an asset. And, like, I constantly find myself, like, shit-testing people for, like, two months before I'm like, okay. That's what's so hard. You're not a yes man. You're not a yes man, and you're cool, and you're yourself. You're not trying to morph to what I want. Yeah. Dude, you can tell, because there was one kid we hung out with, you separate times. I won't. But you you just basically hung out with this one guy, and you could just just tell. Like, I didn't think it would be that obvious, but when you're on the other side of things, when, like, I guess you kind of are the asset. Hit me up to work out, and it's like, Bro, you didn't really want to work out with me. Oh, no. You just wanted me. to say you worked out no, with me. No, it was worse with me because he only wanted to get through me to get to him. Yeah. And I was like, dude. That's how they do it with my friends, too. Yeah. Which is, and that's another reason why, you like, link ups are so. Because, like, there are people in the game that, like, I would, like, bro, I would make a sick video with that dude. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I've never reached out to someone and be like, let's shoot a video, like, blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's like, because I don't want to be seen as that dude that's like he's trying to get something. I know, culture, even which is co- tough because I'm really even not. with collabing with you, I'm like I don't want to make this out like a clout transaction. No, and no. I knew that it wasn't that. No, and it worked out because yeah. we fucked with each other. Mm. You actually watched the videos. There's not sometimes you mm. meet people like that hadn't even watched the videos. Yeah, yeah. Which is mm. chill. I mean, you don't you know there's only so many hours in the day to that's watch what's everybody you that's link what's, up with. That's what's funny. I would hope if you're linking up, you would. I would hope so too. But actually, watch I would a hope a little bit I would of their hope content. So. I would fucking hope so. But you could tell, I think a few guys didn't. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe? I don't know. No hate, no hate. Yeah, no, nah, not at all. Like I said, I don't watch everybody. Well, uh, at the end of the day, also, like, what the fuck do I know? I'm just Jack. I'm just big dog. What does Joe Rogan always say? <laughs> this is just my opinion. It's just stuff. a fucking buff guy in a tank top talking, bro. <laughs> yeah. What do we know? I'm if just you could <laughs> go back in time, would you do anything differently? Oh, in what sense? Me? <laughs> um. Mm. <laughs> and then I guess we'll caveat that end of best advice for an 18 year old fresh out of high school perfect okay different this is a cool this is gonna be a cool topic and this is just my take on it but um differently for training that I'm gonna say no because like just the way that my life was like I couldn't have trained any different in my opinion and gotten to where I was now I'd say if I knew a little bit more like heading into it I would have taken 
just mobility more seriously at a younger mm-hmm. age. That's the biggest uh, thing. Yeah. Is like because yeah. I remember mm-hmm. when I used to like fuck warming up. I throw on two plates because mm-hmm. my oh. friend would throw on two plates, and I just like cringe at no, me no. doing that. Shit. You there. can get away with it, like because like. Thankfully, I kind of was, like, into warming up a little bit throughout my whole career as a weightlifter. Um, but I definitely, dude, I spend, like, a half hour warming up yeah. every single day in the gym, rolling yeah. out my muscles. I roll out my muscles yeah. at night because if you're someone who takes it seriously and trains hard, it's going to catch up with you with age. I'm 26, and I'm telling you right now, like, I hurt if I don't fucking take care of myself. So just be, mm-hmm. I said, if I could change one thing, I would have taken mobility more seriously at a younger age. That's, like, it makes that's you stronger opinion. too for your lifts. And honestly. hydration. I can't tell you how many times mm. I was younger where I like didn't hydrate at all and just really? like, went to the gym. That's so f- like I really had um I was pretty strict. A easy that. segue into lifting because the Marine Corps preaches hydration. Like like, hydrate or die. Yeah, if you want And I'm like, okay, eat big. And then I also had like people around me that already yeah. knew how to train. So I got to avoid a lot of the bullshit. The Marine Corps really helped you out to get you where you're at yeah, right now. Shout out like... to the Marine Corps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you credit a lot of your shit. Bro. But uh advice to an eighteen year old fresh out of high school, you could start that, Russo, and I'll just your thoughts on it. Eighteen. So my two cents is you would you need to view you need to view college, in my opinion, unless you're going for a STEM degree as a scam, my two cents. Unless you're going engineering, nursing, doctor, IT, something where, like, the salary money at the end of the tunnel is, like, there, you need this degree, then I would go into debt. Realize that going into debt when you're in 18, and the thing that pisses me off about those student loans is, like, Anyone can give approved for like two hundred thousand oh, dollars, which is it's insane. it's crazy. You That's can't you can't get approved insane. for a car loan it's at eighteen, insane. but you can get approved for a huge college debt, fucking like, like a, a student loan. And you're a kid at eighteen. Yeah, you don't you know not, that. If you are not debt, Dude. like when I went to school for IT, I had years of programming already under me. I had years of IT already under me in high school because I went to a really. You good, went to he, you went to college, yeah. Yeah, and I went to college. Yeah. I never went. To, I did for two semesters. But like, I, I had this extreme passion for it at eighteen. Like, if you don't have an extreme passion for anything, don't be putting yourself into random. Don't don't be like, oh, I'm gonna go get a business degree because oh, everyone's no. going to college. No. No, I've met so many legitimate businessmen that have never studied business at all in college. My other two cents would be like, instead of putting yourself into extreme amounts of debt when you're 18, you could just get a skill, whether that be blue collar or whether that be online. Like, I just hired a video editor. I won't really give a shit as long as you could edit. If you the, make good quality, if like, you what just edit the videos, I don't give a fuck about your college degree. No, fuck no. that. So blue collar job, you're not going into debt. You're gonna make thirty dollars an hour, but you're gonna take the toll on your body. So you can make money while you're thinking about what your you know long term goal is. But yeah, as an eighteen year old, like I wish and, I really, really I was so pushed by my parents to go into college. Did we all well, so as pushed. same here. As ninety percent of the population is. Like yeah. college is the answer. And so I guess what you were saying is like be wary of college. Like and my uh explanation to an eighteen year old is like pretty much the same thing. I'm just gonna say college isn't always the answer and like everyone pushes for that so hard. And, it, and I'm not hating on kids that go to college because no. I, I I just I was a terrible student. I all, never got good grades. Same. I didn't have a passion for studying, and it's, it's like it it really bugged me for a long time because especially when I was in the Marine Corps, it's like, dude, what am I gonna do when I get out of the Marine Corps? Like, I don't want to be a bum. I don't want to go like school sucks. So I ended up going to school for like three semesters out of the Marine Corps, um, and I was like, this just isn't it. And I wasn't even getting into debt because mm-hmm. the military was paying for it at that point. And I was like, I had zero fulfillment because I wasn't doing what I liked. And I just, I walked away. I was like, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to find another way. And Mm. there's definitely other ways to be successful. You don't need that college degree. And you have to think about like, your parents did not grow up in the information age. No. This is the fucking information age. It's so fucking different. So I can go... We are in the matrix right now. Seriously, this is the matrix revealing itself. And you can literally become an expert in anything you want and it's there for free. Within six months. Or you can pay... (laughs) If you want to pay... Like, if I want to be good at investing, like, I could pay $5,000, $10,000 and have a 1v1 with an investor that's constantly... That's so true, too. Making 50k a month. 
or a program like you can get 1v1 teaching and not pay the piper with the college like Dude, yeah. i'm i'm gonna be honest like i'm very anti-college unless you're yeah. chasing a phd unless you're getting like something where it's absolutely mm -hmm. fucking required to get a degree okay you absolutely have that passion you always knew you wanted to do that you see yourself at 28 years old being the top of that career then go to college if you're going for a bullshit business degree gender studies degree like you're really going into six figures in debt and if you're like oh i'm gonna miss out on the college experience i'm not gonna party you don't have to enroll in college to there fucking you go. party with college just move to people. Fucking just fucking ASU, go with bro. a friend. Like, yeah. 100%. Like, if that's what you're worried about, you can literally just go to a college and not enroll in party. Yeah, exactly, dude. Honestly, R R Russo's what's... heated over college. No, you know? bro, what's sleep? I spent so much. Like, I remember. Same, bro. Like, so I remember when I got sponsored by EA, like, my parents, like, you should stay in college. I'm like, nah, this is really working out. Like, and dude, all, yeah. all my friends back then were like, insane brains way older than me all on the way to becoming millionaires are all telling me to drop out and my parents are like well if we if you drop out we're gonna kick you out and this is like 18 19 i'm like well like eventually you have to like treat plan a as plan a right you can't like diversify to plan b and plan a eventually you got to go for it mm -hmm. but i remember like I was making a lot of income at that time and I was like, wow. And then I got the bill for my college oh, and $40,000 later for two years, you know, that was so much money that I could have quadrupled that money with the business experience I had at that time. And like, I think people like they hide, they hide that finite number from you until you're done. And then like, oh, and I'm, they normalize it. It's normal. It's like, no, this is what everyone does. If you're feeling the pressure... Do you think, really want to be like everyone? Bro, I think what's slept on is when you're 18, like, bro. You got to figure it out. But you know what's you awesome about dude. being 18, you though? Don't. And what... It's like, there's so much pressure put on you. But, bro, think you're about this. Kid. If you didn't do shit yes. from 18 to 22, cool. Go to college then. What like, you oh, need, I, dude, I, like, what you you know need what to saying? do, bro, like, if you're 18, take one year off and work part-time or whatever and Find something you like. If you're really skeptical go about going to yeah, school. Yeah, you can go to college right? when you're 19. That's normal. If you fucking you feel like just... You have so much time Take at a that year or two off, bro. Fuck up. You Dude, can, your like, 20s are throwaway years. That shit, helped, years. That shit yeah. helped me so much because I didn't go to college like the first two years, basically. And that's when I figured out, like, I want to do this. Like, if it wasn't for those two years, if I would have gone straight to a university, got into a frat, started partying, I'd probably just be, like, with a shitty degree right now. I like, think you know what I mean? Further, like, then the further you get down the... I call it the script... <laughs> and I hate when I always call yeah. it the script. And I hate when you bring yeah. this up with people that believe in the script because they uh, look at you like they get triggered. You're like you're like you need to grow up. It's you're not a that easy. You know, like, like, <laughs> stop being a kid. It's uh, like the script is what: go to college, get married, get a house, um, provide for your family. What's pretty much that translates to? You're fuck? always going to be in debt. Yep. Like what yeah, happened? You, you ask any millionaire, and they'll say never buy a house. They want the four hundred one k. That's buy a fucking. House. They'll say retirement. rent so, rent a duplex, live in the side of the duplex, then get a new duplex. Like own assets that are paying you instead of going into debt to own an asset that's like appreciating this much. Like people are like, oh if I buy a house when I sell it, what you make like what, thirty K? Yeah. Like if you had a cash flowing asset, that'd be way more money over time. Money coming in your pocket all the time. Basically so, like there's just so many ways to make money. Yeah. It's just like But so the further ways. you get down the script like college like the harder it is to do mm -hmm. something like we're doing bro right now i got I'm tied I'm to nothing because we haven't fell into the script yet mm -hmm. i don't have a house i don't have like this i don't have all this bullshit I it's can drop easier everything. to see the vision yeah when you're not two hundred thousand dollars in debt exactly. with a house. like me and jack right now we can pack our shit and go to houston i'm out yeah i'm fine and start making content real. there because we haven't fallen into, i'm not in college debt he's on college so debt. this isn't me like, or us well kind of ruse <laughs> like yeah. shitting on college because obviously college works out for some people 100%. but i'm just saying you don't need to feel the pressure to, I'm going to go to college because I don't want to be involved. And if your parents are making you go to college, just say, give me one year. Like, let me think about it first. And tell them you're going to go the next year or some shit. And try to find a passion and show them that it's making income. Yeah, it should be. Show them. It should be like, if you don't want to go to college, like, it's like life or death grind time. And just yes. know, know when you're 18, like, that was you me have so year. much more energy and drive mm -hmm. than you will as you age. Like, when you're 18, you should be absolutely, like, 
like I was methodically thinking out my life back then of how I wanted it to play out and like I knew like if I wanted to do the social media thing like we all have financial freedom here we don't go to a job we don't have a boss like so nice. that's a very rare opportunity and you have to work like that type of person to get in that spot everyone here has done that extreme amount of grinding mm -hmm. but at 18 you have a lot of time to fuck up constantly Dude, and yeah. like Jack said, even if you try and do something on your own till 22. And you have no success. And you're fucking up. You're fucking up. You're fucking Which up. Which if you're working hard, you're probably going to find success. Yeah. But if you fuck it up completely, guess what? Who cares? You can go to college then. Yeah. You could still get the same student loans. Like, I don't know. I just say really think about like what you want out of life I yeah. just at think, a young age. I just think like Jack, it's, it's the script to systemize sheep, put you in debt. You have no mobility. Like... By the time you get out of college, you buy a house, extreme amount of debt, then you want a family, extreme amount of bills. It's, it's a script. Where, it's where, a where, script where's, where's the extreme amount of free time to like put together a plan to do your own thing? Or enjoy your life, bro. Exactly. They because don't want you like to. at the end of the day, like I'm not gonna get huge into this because I know a lot of people always are in my DMs because I've mentioned like um my struggles with depression in the past throughout the Marine Corps and coming out of it. And like a large reason why I was unhappy is because I was like feeling so much pressure to follow the script. Like I have to do this, but I, I was on how I was like, dude, this isn't what I want to do. There's got to be more to life than fucking reading textbooks and like grinding a job that you don't really care about at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's very frustrating. So you've got to do what makes you happy. At the let, end let's, the let's fast forward and say you did get the degree. You're in the shitty nine to five because I personally experienced that. This is what I had an awakening. So I got this internship that was only for seniors and juniors. And I was a freshman I was never supposed to get this. And I think it was like placed in my life for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, I did the nine to five. Girl. Like this was my dream job. Everyone there was making like $200,000 a year programming. I'm like, oh my God, if I just, and they're like, if you continue working here, you can intern here all your time and we'll hire you after you get your degree. And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. And like I said earlier in this podcast, I was fit shamed there. And then like, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't stare. Because you were unhappy. I Bro, couldn't unhappy. stare at the computer. Yeah. I remember driving home and stop and go traffic in my 2002 Forester every I've had day. lots of days. And like I like, that, I freaked out like you freaked out in the Marine Corps. I'm like, this can't be me. And that's when I started taking YouTube so much more seriously. Like I had the dream internship and it made me like completely quit IT. And it, it's just so insane to me. But some people don't have that awakening until they're in that nine to five. Until you're trapped in That's the script. Funny. Bro, you, you, you know, uh, what do they call them? Midlife crises. Every mm -hmm. time I've seen dudes with midlife crises, I'm like, it's because you've been doing something that you didn't want to do for so long. And now you're like, Finally you're like, damn, life's, yeah. life's going to end one day. Like, I want to have fun. And then guess what? You're 40 in the script. Honestly, that really does benefit <laughs> you. Is doing so nine so five let's, say, let's say the script got you, which it gets a lot of fucking people. It right? gets most the people. majority. Yeah, so yeah. that means it's going to be much more difficult. But now you need to start stacking that capital and thinking of a way to create passive streams to eventually get yourself out of the matrix. So let's say... <laughs> You're in, yeah, like let's say you're in your nine to five you're in the matrix you know you're just a fucking peon worker and like it's a corporate rat race at the end of the day even if you win the fucking race you're still a piece of shit rat in my opinion <laughs> i'm a fucking entrepreneurial shark you're a rat you won the race you suck dick all the way oh the my God. God. <laughs> like i fucking hate corporate like the way they were in that that consulting place i'm like oh so i have to butter up to this this dude talks shit on my car i'm like he's like Oh, is that your Forester? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, my grandma gave it to me. He's like, oh, I'm thinking about getting my mom one. You know, I just go to BMW. I'm like, dude, oh, that was yeah. like the CEO of this company. That's, dude, that's one thing that used to really give me so much, like, um, I don't want to, anger, but bro, I hated when kids my age were in college and they were so cocky about it. Oh. Because I'm like, I'm like... I was like, you really hyped about it at the end of the day? And like, no. and I'm not talking, like, I'm really trying not to talk shit on college, but like a big reason why I walked away is because I saw so many of the people I grew up with go through the script, get the degree, and I'm like, that is nothing close to what I want. Honestly, you know, growing up with you guys helped me out so much because I saw that. 
because I was I was like 18, 19, seeing all of them graduate and stuff, and being like, that's that's it, like, that's mm-hmm. the end goal. Like some mm-hmm. of your like friends mm-hmm. and stuff. And I was yeah, like, you benefited because yeah. you, he he's all Johnny's always been tight with us. I've known Johnny since he was like eleven years old or something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Exactly. So you kind of got to see how stuff played out for me mm-hmm. and with Fred. Exactly. And, like, and then I, you guys also made me realize I could fuck up till I'm twenty five and then still be twenty five and young yeah. and like figuring it out like. Because that's when you guys all started figuring it out. So, I, I don't know. I have, it does motivate me. I had a doctor message me probably like six weeks ago. And he's like, man, Russo, I love what you're doing. Like, he, he has a PhD. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, eventually I just want to get enough cash flow to have only passive streams. I hate <laughs> I hate grinding as a doctor. Like, to go through all that and to not love what you do just proves a point oh. to the system and that's like, like the top of the fucking and race. that is the like, hardest thing to achieve yeah. and i've met so many doctors russ's fian russ's um sister's fiance for elevate mm-hmm. is a doctor and he looks at russ's life and wants that life he wants the freedom of time and what's what, can you russ's background just a brief like ex- yeah, explanation so, of <laughs> Russ is a really? high school dropout, strain of the streets, rough upbr- upbringing, Oxycon kingpin, six time felon, Whew. went to prison for six years, came out, did tons of e commerce brands. You know, he completely had that like extreme roller coaster, and now. Like a doctor is wanting to be like, I want to be like I want you. that life. Yeah. Like, because what he, again, did he go to school? No, he taught himself in prison, he right? That's what out he dropped in junior year of high school. Junior year in high school? But That's then he crazy. taught, he, what did he say the other day? He's like, I read books when I was in prison. I, like, mm-hmm. I learned how to run a business. $12 books probably from Amazon. Like, no, in, the, in prison, mm-hmm. all he did was read. He read like every single entrepreneurial book. Mm-hmm. But it's always it's always that story where like the extreme low. Yeah, that's yeah, such yeah, an extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, you don't have like, to go to prison. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're not we're not like go to prison and do no. Yeah, no, that's uh, where the girls or the or the hate on the script <laughs> always say like, well, that's one in a million. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that extreme. <laughs> you could be. Point like, is yes. like time is the ultimate currency. Like yeah. money is money. You can't get time back. Mm-hmm. And all time's not created equally. Like the linear grind of a nine to five like, is going to feel forever. Bro, and you're like, it's gonna feel forever in your mind. It's gonna be longer. It's crazy. You're on this life to enjoy it too. Like you're not, you don't have to do all this bullshit they make you do. Dude, I couldn't. Like Like, it's here to like enjoy. Like you want to have like I love being able to wake up, get my meals in without having to like. I remember back when I was working my nine to five jobs. Like bro, like just trying to balance lifting (laughs) and just even with a chill nine to five job, it's like okay, how am I gonna get my meals in? Like bro, if you can get that freedom, it's crazy. And the last thing I'll say on this is like. If you are fortunate enough to find success and like, let's say you're in a situation like any of us where you have a sponsorship and you get a bag, don't be stupid with that bag, especially your mm-hmm. initial one. Cause just cause you get money at first, mm-hmm. that's not promised. You need to find a way to turn that money my into two, more money. Yeah, My two cents as an entrepreneur is you should literally try and sit on a year of salary in case it all flat lines. Mm-hmm. Like I sit on way more money than I would if I had a nine to five and it was constantly coming in because I'm the boss. Definitely. So Definitely. like you need to treat money way differently. And like Jack says, like you just can't be blowing it on stupid shit. Like now, if you do get the opportunity, like you are a businessman and money makes money. Just buying stupid shit is not going to make Bro, money. like someone And was... if you are working that nine to five and you're stuck in that spot, you can get out of that spot. But you gotta, you gotta channel that pain of being in that spot into actually hustling. Like most of my friends are like, I want to do what you do, Russo. I'm like, well, you use that pain and you take it out on instant gratif- instant gratification at the club. Oh, you take it out on instant yeah. gratification at the bar. Like you need to take that pain and grind it out and get out of the situation. The pain, like it's a real yeah. thing. Like I said, like I, I dealt with my dark times in life because I wasn't happy with what was going on and I did something about it. So mm-hmm. I think those th- those time periods come in your life for a reason and they humble you. It's too. your call on how you react to that and that's either going to make or break you. So anyone who is going through uh, like a period where they're unhappy and they're unfulfilled like bro just think about what you really want and make the decisions that are going to get you out of there not keep you in there. So yeah, smart. Do we want to move on to a couple more and then wrap it up yeah something absolutely nobody talks about in the fitness industry Hmm. i'll say that 
the fitness industry from the outside looks like a facade of money, <laughs> but there's really like a few key individuals who make all the money in the fitness industry, I'd say. And that competing in my two cents, like how we touched on earlier, like what the, was the que- what's the question exactly? Something Sorry. something oh, just something no one talks no about. No one talks oh, about. Oh, that is a question, like something yeah. no one talks about. Yeah, mm. okay. Sorry. Yeah, and then I'd I'd say that well, when we look at the fitness industry when I first got into, like nobody was like you'd have like some extremely juiced up guy and you'd be like, Oh, how do you get like that? And then they they push mass gainer on you. <laughs> they would push sawdust supplements yeah, on you. That really like it's the trend doing that, man. It's this ain't no fucking mass gainer. <laughs> mass gainer <laughs> mass gainer is the fucking yeah. Yeah. Rich Piano in front of it. That's funny. Uh, what could I think of that no one talks about in the fitness industry in my short experience in the fitness industry? Um, Have you been to the Expos yet? If you come to the Arnold, I'll link up with you guys. I want to go to the Arnold really yeah. bad. Like, the yeah, Arnold my, would be sick. Bro, we've been yeah. doing this with COVID, so we don't know any of that shit. Yeah, you know? like, I can't wait to get out and travel more. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I can't... I, something no one talks about. I can't really think of anything something. Oh. in my head. Um, But I'll just reinforce that, like nothing is going to get you results quickly. Nothing is going to get you results without putting in work at the gym. You could take everything you want in the world, every PED under the sun. You could give zero fucks about your health and like, I'm going to get big. Doesn't matter if you don't have the work ethic. Yeah, enjoy so it there's too. No, there's no shortcuts. And if you are taking every PED under the sun, it's going <laughs> to bite you in the ass 10 years from now. Yeah, like if nothing is without consequences in the long run. But, um... Yeah, I guess that's my two cents. Oh, like, just you just kind of nothing's it. going to give be given to you quickly. There's lots of supplements out there. They're like, oh, you take this, you're going to like, like your most important mindset. It should be putting in the work at the end of the day. So yeah, I think that's something that gets looked over in the fitness industry. I'm with the twelve year olds. Let's pick one more question from um your shit. From me, let me yeah. take a, let me take a peek. Take a peek. I think this is great. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. I just have to move back to Seattle or so. <laughs> that wasn't so damn pricey to live here. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty cheap Dude, living. Just buying groceries here, like I'm like fuming in the store. I'm like, it costs this much. Here. Yeah, Seattle's pretty expensive. It's mad expensive out here. Um, this would just be a fun, chill one to wrap it up because I get this question a lot, and then we could all weigh in on it. It's just like, what's your camera setup and what you have to do? <laughs> this is perfect because I think a lot of people think that you need a crazy setup to be successful that is so not true it's just gonna go right back to you need to focus on good content mm-hmm. take chris jones for example yeah love chris jones to death mm-hmm. i like i, I like be smooth. that guy <laughs> he uh, recorded his youtube videos on an android for yeah. years not even an iphone on an android like it, you know like not an iphone t- when you can tell it's an android <laughs> yeah. for years yeah. and what he was wildly successful. He had a million YouTube. subs on that's all of what, his um, things. Derek, Derek got on the phone with me and was talking shit on me. He's like, he's like, Russo, so you don't, because I, you're watching this on like a thirteen thousand dollar cinema camera. He's like, <laughs> he's like, Russo, so you don't need that fucking cinema camera. Like, you just need to make more content. Like, if you just shot it on your iPhone, you would be fine. And I agree with him. Like, I bought this yeah. camera for my car channel, but like. I 100% agree. It's all about... they Like, the audience wants to see you. Like, the audience just wants to see Jack. Like, mm-hmm. I would say in the upper echelon of YouTube channels, like, if you start getting successful and, like, money starts really flowing in, yeah, you want to reinvest that Why money. wouldn't you upgrade? You want to give Why the audience a better experience. Yeah. But at the start, you shouldn't be like, oh, I need to save up and get this camera set up before I start. Like, no. Get your iPhone and start. Yeah. yeah. Get your for iPhone for and start. Um... Mm-hmm. And then I'll tell you exactly what I started on because I don't think it was an outrageous camera. And if you no. do want to invest in a camera, I would look at Sony's for filming. The Sony makes filming so easy. You could learn every, too. everything you need to learn about filming a Sony on YouTube in one day. And um, I started on an A6400 with a great this, this lens right here. It was the fucking the 1.8-3.5. It's chill. This is like a $400 lens. Nothing mm-hmm. crazy. Um, and that that everyone was blown away by the quality and that's a very affordable camera so honestly i'd, I'd say like that that's the move right there the a6400 a6400 you don't need anything right more than that yeah. you don't need anything less you can do obviously like we said you can do the iphone but if you want high quality videos that's literally it anyone could afford people that. thought you were you had the craziest camera dude yeah. 
Um, but yeah, honestly, that. But then when you do get the chance, you should upgrade, 100%. in my opinion. Like, why you should not? upgrade for your audience. Like, yeah. I, I get angry, like, while I'm going in the car channel scene, and I get angry at these car YouTubers because they're making, like, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month, and they're still recording on GoPros. Like, come on. Dude, that's Give, give your audience a better experience. Yeah, well. And it does help, dude. But Quality does help. I started YouTube in the fitness days on... I was working a job for $7.25 an hour. $7.25 an hour as a banquet server. And mm. I saved up and I bought a Canon T5i, I think, for $650. And I didn't even have money to buy an extra lens. And I used the kit lens for two years two years until i got my enhanced athlete sponsorship and then i reinvested that money and bought the a7s2 i had back there mm -hmm. so my camera was 600 bucks work with what you got 100 percent. work with don't use it got. as an excuse make good content yeah but if you have the money yeah yeah 100 percent. so i guess that's our little and, spiel. Just, and just remember like the more expensive camera you get the more you have to have expertise in cinematography <laughs> no, to, dude, to even yeah. pull the image out of it. To make it worth I'd honestly, being that expensive. Right. I would draw the line at the A7 III. Like, A7, right now, right there. I have the GOAT set up. I don't know yeah. where my camera is, but the A7 III with... Uh, I think yours is 28-70mm lens. Yeah, 20, I just got that lens. Yeah, There's no reason for me to upgrade past no, that point. It, no reason. No. At that point, it's going to get, like you said, way too technical yeah, with it. Way too technical. Yeah, like... Yeah. This camera you're watching on is a Sony FX9, which retails for like 13 grand. You shoot movies on this thing. That's what and is. right now, the settings I have it on, you would like if we would flip between your and Jack, it would be no difference, mm -hmm. right? If I wanted to actually pull the thirteen thousand dollar image out of it, I would have to completely add in the color post production. So much work. And which, if I you're would, a YouTuber, like you're not, you don't have that. time to do that you're shit. Not you know, you're not getting paid thousands of dollars. You need to an make editor that to do that. <laughs> yeah. shit, I basically you know? had to learn how to become a. I was like watching pro colorist YouTube <laughs> channel. Yeah, yeah, To be yeah. able to color this footage. So yeah, there's really like, in my opinion, the pinnacle YouTube camera out on the market right now is the A7S III. Mm -hmm. yeah. The pinnacle. Lens for YouTube is the G Master 24 to 72.8. It's sick. It's yeah. Literally, it's I don't see any point of going higher unless you're doing color graded production work. So, my car YouTube channel, I'm going to do color graded production work. They're not doing that with fitness. That would be a waste of their time. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, lighting too. Good lighting, that, but good, yeah, lighting. good lighting can always make a shittier camera look better than bad lighting with a better yeah. camera. So, if you have the option to go to a gym that has good lighting, it makes a yeah, difference. Yeah. You'll notice. But that's our spiel. This was the funniest little podcast setup. <laughs> I wish I could see, but like we don't. You guys this don't. Is I not, feel like it probably comes off like bigger on camera. Than, like we yeah. are literally cramped. It's true. We're, yeah, we're, we're literally like, fucking cramped. And it's like, like the, we had to shut the AC off too. So it's kind of toasty. Boiling. We're so sweating all right now. Yeah, yeah, we're we're right. gonna go. We're gonna go get some food and hit a lift. I got a bunch of content with the goat Russo go. coming, so we appreciate you guys. Make sure you check out Jack and John and. Yeah, go watch the IGF workout video because yes, sir. peace be I with you. Fucking, I got stoned off of 1.5 hits. I felt so pathetic. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I look, you got pretty stoned too off too. You're I good. should get ripped for today's workout just for fun, just for Do the it. video. All right. All right, boys. We'll talk to you later. Well, and I'll see you guys in my next video.